Welcome guys to our YouTube channel. My name is Tabiso Lanzie. Today we are going to talk about cash receipt channel, specifically for grade 10. So guys, let's take a look at our lesson outcomes. Our lesson outcomes are as follows. We are going to focus on the explanation of cash receipt channel, source document to be used, Format of cash receipt journal, analysis of transactions for cash receipt journal, as well as recording of transactions to cash receipt journal. So, what is cash receipt journal? Cash receipt journal is nothing else but is the book of first entry for all cash received by the business. It indicates all the cash deposits received by the business. And it's also used to show all the inflows of money in the business. Source document to be used. So, guys, before we start recording whatever, we need to understand different source documents to be used when recording cash receipt journal. Let's take a look. The source document used the most as proof of the type of transaction that was made. Ah, it's a receipt. If ever you received something or ever you sold something, you need to issue out a receipt. And then that receipt serves as your, what? as your source document. And then we have cash register, slip, cash register roll, cash register team, as well as bank statement. So now let's take a look at the format of cash receipt journal. You are going to be provided with a format whenever you are required to complete what a cash receipt channel. And then my format is as follows. We are going to have a document number. Document number will be used to record our source documents. And then going to have a column for day in which day did that particular transaction take place. And then details whom we got money from. And then we record the name. And then we have analysis of receipt. How much money did we get? And then we have bank. Going to bank our money. Is that particular transaction for sales, cost of sales, debtors control, or Sandria account? And then Sandria account, it was created because of that particular transaction does not have a column. If ever, for example, we had a transaction about sales, and then in this format, we have a column for sales. Then we are just going to use that column for sales. But if ever we didn't have a column for sales, then we are going to use Sandry account. So now, let's analyze different transactions for cash receipt channel. Transactions for April 2022. On the 1st of April, received 140000 from the owner, DR Teams. As capital contribution issued receipt number 208 so cousin now we have a document number in which our document number is two dates because of the receipt we issued out a receipt number 208 receipt number 208 it's your document number on which day on the first of april whom did we get 140,000 from from the owner but who is the owner are teams how much did we get as analysis of receipt we got 140 000. so most of the time whenever i teach my learners i will always say yes we got 140 000, but it doesn't mean that 140 000 is safely banked so in order for that 140 000 to be safe we need to take it to the bank so we have a bank column then we are going to take our 140 000. that 140 000, it's for what that 100,000, 140,000, it's for capital. Do we have a column for capital? No, we don't have a column for capital. Then we are going to use Sandry account. Sandry account, it was created for those transactions in which they don't have a, what you call a column in our cash receipt channel. Then we are going to go to Sandry account. We have an amount column. We have details column. And the amount we got 140,000 for what? For capital. Details is capital. So let's take a look at the second transaction. On the 4th of April, issued a receipt to our 
tea florist for rent received from them. For how much? For thousand. So in this transaction is different because of now we are getting rent. We are no longer talking about capital, but we are talking about rent income. Meaning RT florist, they are uh, we regard them as our tenants. Yes, they are our tenants. So since they did not give us a document number, but previous transaction spoke about we issued a receipt number. 280 then in this particular transaction we are just going to continue with our document number so our document number will be 231 on which day on the fourth whom did we get uh, got 4500 from it's rt florist how much did we get we got 4500 as our analysis of receipt but yet this money is not safe so we need to make it safe then 4500 needs to go to the bank column and then this 4500 was it for what was for what 4500 was for rent do we have a column for rent we don't have a column for rent then we go straight to sundry account as sundry account was created for those transactions in which they don't have a particular column and then we go into sundry account amount we got 4500 details as rent income so now guys Let's take a look at our third transaction. On the 7th of April 2022, sales for the day according to the cash register. Guys, in our previous source document, we issued a receipt. But at this case, now, according to the cash register, so we need to understand, according to the cash register, we got 3,000 as sales. And then cost of sales is 2,200. Meaning our document number in this transaction will be cash register roll which is what c r r and then on which day on the 7th of april details because of we don't uh, we uh, uh, this transaction did not specify the person who made sales then we are just going to say our details is sales or in some instant we can say what cash how much did we got from selling our product in the business we got three thousand so three thousand will be recorded under what the column of analysis of receipt but yet this three thousand is not saved yet then we take it to the bank three thousand this three thousand it was for what it was for sales do we have a column for sales yes we have a column for sales and then we go to that column we record three thousand and then they gave us cost of sales in which is about two thousand 200 and then we go under cost of sales column we record our 2200 debtors control we did not get any money from our debtors sundry account since we have a column for sales then there is no need for us to record as i told you that sundry account was created for those transactions in which they don't have a what a particular column so in this transaction we have a specific column for sales i just going to use that column for sales as well as cost of Say. So let's take a look at our fourth transaction, guys. On the 15th of April, we received 500 from D. John in partial payment of his account. Meaning in this transaction, guys, we have a debtor, someone who came to our business to buy goods and services on credit and we allowed that debtor to, work to buy goods and services on credit. So now that debtor is coming back to the business saying, guys, you really helped me so much. So I'm here to pay for what? For my debt. So because of now we are getting money, we are receiving money from that particular person. That's why this transaction is going to be recorded under cash receipt channel. And then we are just going to continue with our document number because of they did not give us our document number. Then we are going to say document number is 232. On which day? On the 15th. Who's the person we are getting money from? is D. John, our debt. How much are we getting from that particular person? We are getting 500. And then that 500 is for what? It's for debtors control. Do we have a column for debtors control? Yes, we have a column for debtors control. And then we record 500 under debtors control. Since we have a column for debtors control, there is no need for us to go under sundry account. This transaction is not for sales. This transaction is not for capital. This transaction is not for 
what you call anything but this transaction is for only debtors control so we are only going to focus on the debtors control account and then same day we have another transaction on the 15th of april we have another transaction so on the 15th sales amounted to 3000 cost of sales is calculated at profit markup percentage of 20 percent on cost this transaction guys it's all about sales so the previous sale transaction they gave us cost of sale but then uh, 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 at this transaction they did not give us the cost of sales amount but they gave us a profit markup percentage meaning we need to calculate our profit markup percentage and then we'll be able to record our cost of sales so first before we do profit markup percentage we need to record this transaction document number 233 on which day same day on the 15th and then in details it's sales and then how much did we get for our sales it's 3000 this money is not saved yet but we need to take it to the bank so cousin i was telling you about having more than one transaction in one day if ever you have more than one transaction in one day we need to collect all the money that we made during that day we don't take each and every single transaction to the bank but we need to collect all the money so we are going to take 500 of d john on that day and then add it with our 3000 sales amount and then to the bank we are taking 3500 rather than taking 500 to john and then coming back again to the business and sell and then take 3000 like it's just a waste of time and waste of transport so in this case we add all the amount of money we got on that day and then we take it to the bank as one amount so to the bank we're taking 3500 and then 3000 it was for sales and then we need to calculate our cost of sales so what we have we have our sales and then sales will be multiplied by 100 meaning we are looking for 100 percent your cost of sale will always be 100 percent we are looking for 100 percent divided by 100 plus 20 meaning 100 percent it's your cost and then 20 percent uh, uh, it will be our profit and then it's going to be sales multiplied by 100 divided by 120 and then 3000 is our sales multiplied by 100 divided by 120 and then we have 2500 all the time your sales must be less than most of the time your cost of sales they must be less than your sales. If ever you get an amount more than your sales, your cost of sales, if ever they are more than your sales, then it's wrong. Your cost must be less than your sales. So, cousin, make sure if ever you have a markup percentage, use that markup percentage. If ever you're creating cost of sales, cost of sales will be 100%, while your sales will be over 120 sometimes your markup percentage will be 50 percent then it will be 100 divided by 150 maybe it will be 30 percent your markup then it will be 100 divided by 30 and then what you have it's your sales multiplied by what you don't have divided by the percentage you have what you don't have what you have is the amount of sales multiplied by the percentage of what you don't have which is what cost of sales divided by the percentage of what you have which is what sales and then guys and we have the complete cash receipt journal all the transactions are recorded there on the 1st of april we received 140,000 from the owner of deems as capital contribution document number 230 on which date the first de details and then our deems analysis of receipt 140,000 and then we have bank and then that money it was for capital 144 amount and then details capital second transaction on the fourth 231 document number and then day four details are a florist analysis of receipt to receive 4500 and then we're taking it to the bank 4500 that 4500 it was for rent income and then we don't have a column for rent income then we are going to use sundry account and then the third transaction on the 7th of april we had sales we received 3000 and then we taking that 3000 to our bank so that it's safe and then sales column 3000 
And then we have cost of sales, 2,200. We are not getting money from any other debtor. Since we have a column for sales, there's no need for us to record under sundry account. And then on the 15, we have two transactions in one day. The first transaction, we got our partial payment from the debtor, who is D. John, which is 500. And then we record 500 under analysis of receipt. We take it uh, and then we look for column for debtor's control. If ever we have a column, in which in this case we have a column, and then we're going to record that 500 under debtor's control. There is no need for salary account. And then last transaction on the 15, we made sales, and then we got 3,000 for sales, and then we're taking it to the bank. Since two transactions in one day, we add all the amounts for that day, and then we take it to the bank as 3,500, but 3,000 is for sales. And then we used our markup percentage whereby we said 3,000 multiplied by 100 divided by 120, and then we got 2,000. 500 and then at the end we close off our cash receipt journal whereby we are going to add all the analysis of receipt column 140,000 plus 4,500 plus 3,000 plus 500 plus 3,000 then we have 151,000 bank 140,000 plus 4,500 plus 3,000 plus 3,500 we have 151,000 and then we go to the sales column 3,000 plus 3,000 equals to 6,000 and then we go to the cost of sales column 2,200 plus 2,500 is 4,700 and then debt has control we only have 500 then we have 500 and then sign reaccount we have 100 and uh, 140,000 plus 4,500 then equals to 144,500 and then we close off. So this is our final cash receipt channel. Thank you guys for being with me in this lesson. So subscribe, like and share so that I can upload more. And please don't forget to press that notification button so that whenever I upload, you are notified. Enjoy. <laughs>